and uh, one of the top insiders of, of the association covering it, uh, as he does for ESPN, our friends at the Worldwide Leader in Sports. Always love having Brian Winhorst on the show. Brian, thanks for calling in. Appreciate it. Yeah, you know, Rich, um, at some point with, when you, we have these chance to – people don't have symptoms have a chance to get these tests, I wonder if, like, you'll be rooting for a positive that you'll be rooting that you had it and didn't know. Like Correct. You'll, be, you'll get the test back and says, oh, yeah, you had it. And you'll be like, yes, I had it. I had it, and, um, and, but we, we also still just don't know um, what that means. We still don't know what that true. means. We don't, mean, we don't know if that truly means we're immune or we're immune for a, time, a period true. of time. That doesn't mean that we can all, all go to some concert, <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean, or, or a sporting event. Yeah. But it would mean potentially that we could donate blood to help somebody right now, which I would do in a heartbeat if I knew that. You know, so uh, and, and the reason why we bring this all up uh, is is in the prism of, of when a sports league can open back up again. I, I give you the floor and what what the NBA is currently internally discussing on that front as best, you know. Yeah, you know, I've been uh, I've been scolded by people in the league in the last uh, few days for being too pessimistic. So I, I'm I'm going to just try to play it straight down the middle of the fairway here, um, you know. I have spent a lot of time, Rich, talking to people, you know, who are in China or involved with the Chinese Basketball Association. And I can hear eye rolls because they say, well, listen, China isn't always truthful. And I agree. Of course they're not. But I, I don't have a selection of 15 different leagues in eight different countries that I can look that are two or three months ahead of us. I, I have to work with what we have. And in both China and Japan, they've had setbacks in terms of basketball. Now, baseball, they're trying in, in Korea, and baseball is a very different sport. It's open air. Uh, there's not as much contact, although you're touching the ball. It's a different sport altogether. Um, but those leagues have had difficulty going there because of, ACE, which we were just talking about, asymptomatic carriers. So, in, so there, until you have a test, that is number one workable that you don't have to wait five or six days for, um, and number two that you can take it without taking resources away from the front lines. That I really don't think we're going to get out of the batter's box. Um, and I know that there are people saying that oh these testing or these tests are going to be available in in six weeks or three weeks or fifteen minutes or whatever. Let me know when they're available. Don't don't promise me when they're available because I remember a couple of weeks ago when nobody could find a test anywhere and the Surgeon General saying, No problem, we'll have a million tests by the end of the week. That didn't happen. So don't don't give me any any deadlines about products that don't exist. So until we have testing, there is really difficult to have any real discussion about getting back until that exists. And they don't have that ubiquitously yet in China where they can get their league back on its feet. And I think that's important to realize. Well, I guess there's also apps that I'm reading about that um, if people report I'm feeling well or I'm reporting I'm not feeling well, um, that you m may be able to be better contact tracing all of this. But you're right. We're not we're not right, anywhere but, close. But, you know, the, that's great for society, but I can feel fine and I may be carrying it and giving it to you. That's that's what the issue has been in China is the asymptomatic carriers. Now, there, there's good news in China. I think I read today, I can't say for sure, I heard that the Wuhan airport reopened, and I know that there, that city is coming back to, uh, to alive. That's a really good sign for us that they're getting past it. Um, but it's, it's, it's the people that don't know that they have it, that aren't even showing a temperature, because that's the one thing that you know people are saying is, well, we'll do, we're going to test people's temperatures every time they walk in and out of a building. Well, that may identify somebody who's beginning to show symptoms. But if you don't have symptoms, it's not going to help. Asymptomatic carriers are the stumbling block to returning to sports from a medical standpoint. Then there's obviously the societal and political standpoint of you better not be taking away from, from society by doing it. Yeah, Reuters is reporting, Brian Winhorst, ESPN NBA insider here. Uh, uh, Reuters is reporting people are now being allowed to leave uh, Wuhan. So... This is 76 days of, of, of containment, and now they have been apparently uh, released from quarantine there. And we all know that this outbreak uh, was first uh, known about, and you're reading about reports that the intelligence community did tell, um, you know, uh, the White House back in November that this was a possibility of this blow, blowing up to the way that we're in right now. So you just do the math, that's six months um, of, of what, you know, of, of going from, 
first being born to um, six months later, Wuhan is, is people are allowed to leave. I mean, you could get, guess do the math and wonder how a sports league could get started again when when China's still going through all that, Brian. So the question is, um, uh, let let's just I guess go down a little bit of a fun spot here. Is there a possibility of of uh, horse contests? I mean, just some way, shape, or form. We're seeing all so many NBA stars on on uh, Instagram live feeds to potentially connect these guys uh, together for our viewing enjoyment, Brian. Yeah, they've been working. They have, they've been working on that for a couple of weeks, and I think once they smooth out the tech, I do think that something like that could happen, and I think that would really be fun. Um, also, uh, not everybody has courts to play on i mean i saw Giannis uh gave an interview last week where he said he doesn't have a court at his house and i know that sounds crazy but in milwaukee you know uh it's hard to go outside for much of the year right and if you don't have an indoor you know i, I Giannis can afford an indoor gym but it, not every not every nba player is going to have it um i'm sure it was not something he thought was an issue was getting a basketball hoop so um some of these guys can't <laughs> It would have to leave their house, and that's a whole other thing. So, yes, uh, I do think that that um, is something that can be done. And uh, I've actually really enjoyed watching some of the old games. I know that that's good, not lasting very long for a lot of people, but um, I've enjoyed it. Um, but uh, you know, the, the real the real reality here is um, there's just so 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 many things that to overcome. And I know that there's excitement about this report about baseball and there's some excitement about this report about tests. And I am all for hope and optimism. I really hope it comes through. But one of the things that is a big factor for the NBA, Rich, is how willing, what is their willingness to bleed into next season? Because Adam Silver now twice has mentioned that he doesn't want to harm next season. And that creates an artificial backstop. Um, because I can kind of see it. If you're the NBA, uh, you have damage to this year, significant damage. Um, do you want to, you know, what is worse, damaging two seasons, uh, taking major financial hits in two seasons, or limiting the damage to one season? That is a really big, complex question that is going to be a factor going forward here. Because in theory, Rich, you could restart the NBA in October, and play the last month of the regular season, then play the playoffs, take off the holidays, and restart after the Super Bowl with another season. And it, and there's no, there's nothing stopping you from doing that, right. except for the fact that it bastardizes the schedule and changes everything up. And and so it 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 it's, it may just be a function of the of the calendar and limiting the damage as much as fighting off the disease at this point. Yeah, I, I'm. Uh... Brian Windhorst here on the Rich Eisen Show. I mean, uh, I forget who we were talking about it with Chris last week. Um, that might have been Mark Stein, your colleague uh, from from the Times, um, that necessity could be the mother of invention, that there's a large group of uh, there's a large group of individuals in the association, I guess Cuban being one of them, who thinks the league should start on Christmas Day anyway and run and run through the summer. And you start reconfiguring when you do your draft and your summer league. And it's a better schedule for the NBA anyway. That that might lead to this. That the ability to uh, start the next season uh, not until then might actually show a better way for the NBA in a post-coronavirus pandemic world. What do you think about that? Yeah, there, that is true. And Adam Silver has even admitted that the that the calendar may look different after this. Um, and uh, you know, th this is a crisis, but there can be some opportunities that are that arise from it. But you know, the one thing that is clear to me, um, you know, while the NBA is working with health officials and working with laboratories on things, the discussions that they have had with their players, which they have to come up with a deal here, Rich, in the next few days, because the next paychecks are due April 15th, and the NBA doesn't intend to pay them all. And uh, the NBA has the right within their contract to just quit paying the players altogether. They don't want to do that. They don't want to create an animus. But they've got to make a deal with their players. Major League Baseball already made a deal with their, with their players. They've got to make a deal with their players about how they're going to go forward with this, how they're going to sort of set aside money to, to shelter the damage that's happening. And in my understanding, as they talk, the union and players, they're not talking about the restart. They're not talking about what parameters they would you know, be willing to play in. They're only talking about the finances. 
And I think that's a responsible thing to do. That's exactly what you should be doing to protect the league. But it's an indication of how far away they are from knowing how this is going to look. Yeah, I know. I know what baseball said, Brian, but um, the NBA was the first to, to shut down. Uh, and, and, and I've said it uh, before. I'll say it again here. I don't know if I said it with you before, but Rudy Gobert testing positive for COVID-19 with fans in the building in Oklahoma City and a referee in Sacramento that had been around the Jazz the day before canceling that game and the NBA just shutting down changed the way the entire country was viewing this entire situation. I mean, the whole social distancing and we need to stay home and we need to change the way that we fundamentally live in this country was led by the National Basketball Association, which led the way for the NCAA to wake up in time to cancel most of their tournaments and the NCAA tournament, which led to an entire sea change of the way that we did everything, hockey followed, et cetera, and so on and so forth. We're still only two-plus weeks removed from the Indian Wells tournament being canceled and many people there who were involved in the tournament saying, why are we doing this? That's totally changed. And the association is in a leadership role, I think. And I'm wondering if that is in any way, shape, or form forming their beliefs in talking uh, about all this, Brian. Well, they, ho- they hope so, but the reality is they didn't have a choice, Rich. When Rudy Gobert tested positive, they had to, they had to shut down. Um, it just happened on the timeline. They were the first to deal with it. I actually think that Indian Wells and the Ivy League, in terms of leading the pack, um, you know, deserve some, some, some bravery points for that. Remember, when they shut the league down, the NBA hadn't even announced that they were taking fans out. There were fans in, in the arenas that night. So um, – uh, I think it is a is a something that the NBA ended up doing that could that could be somewhat important, but um, I'm not going to give them points for being mm-hmm. noble. Um, but Adam Silver, I think, has said that he does. You know, they are in position to sort of be the thing that comes back and holds this holds the first championship and stuff like that. And I do think that's important to them. But it would be important to them whether they were the first to shut down or the fifth. Um, and, uh, you know, in some ways playing basketball is, is easier because you don't have to have a hundred yard field. You don't have to have, um, a stadium that needs the kind of maintenance that, you know, you may not be able to do if there's 10 games on it a day, you know, it's, it's a smaller, it's a smallish number of players that you would have to worry about. You know, it's not a a 25 man baseball roster or whatever they want to make the rosters. It's certainly not what you would need for a football team. That said, it's a very physical in contact, close sport. And um, that makes it difficult. You know, you read different things um, from um, uh, these experts who talk about this and it's, it's just really, really hard to form any sort of prediction. That's why, I think the NBA is being responsible, number one, dealing with the finances right now because that's one thing that they can control and saying to everybody who will listen, look, we're not going to do anything until we get to May. When we get to May, we're going to reevaluate. And I, and I know that that's hard for people who, who are trying to look for good news and trying to look for optimism. And we may have optimism by May 1st, but right now I, I – I, I just don't think that the league can move at a fast pace on doing anything. I do have to say uh, you are correct. And uh, we, the day of our, we did a show uh, on that Wednesday when Rudy Gobert uh, that night tested positive. We had Robin Harris, the executive director of the Ivy League, on our show to explain her decision to cancel her tournament, to cancel the uh, men's and women's uh, basketball championships and name uh, two schools and men and women, the, the two teams that would represent them in an NCAA tournament that eventually got canceled. So that is correct uh, in, in pointing that out, that she <clears throat> was the first in that regard. Uh, Brian Windhorst here on the Rich Eisen Show. You mentioned how you're enjoying watching old school basketball. Uh, I do believe, as as we're talking, I could see on the on the sports mix in front of me here, uh, I do believe Grant Hill just sent Dino Raja to the line for two shots uh, on NBA TV. <laughs> I am enjoying this uh, immensely. The great I, Dino Raja. I, I, sorry, sorry. I did see the other night an old school Atlanta Hawks New York Knicks contest. Dominique battling it out. I'm, I'm loving all this, Brian, and and that nostalgia is about to be ratcheted up with the Jordan documentary, The Last Dance, coming on ESPN. What is there anything you know about this that you can help preview it? What 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 can we expect out of this 
10-part doc that starts uh, a couple Sundays from now at the first two parts. Yeah, I didn't quite. So uh, I, I do quite a bit of work with Scotty Pippen, and I've talked with him about it a little bit. I didn't, I didn't quite understand what this was. I didn't understand that there was, like, do- a documentary crew with the Bulls that season. Uh, or somebody was filming for a doc. And I, I want to know, like, where where's the footage been for 20-plus years? Um, Salted away, I and guess. And so, yeah, I, I don't, you know, I don't necessarily, a lot of this is, you know, uh, is crazy. Um, but, you know, in in listening to Pippen talk about that season, which ended in the iconic moment of the shot in uh, Jordan hit in, in Utah, um, you know, there was a lot of stuff going on with the Bulls at that time. And, um, you know, not only that, but because of the the gravity of this project and because Jordan supported it, they got all of the, um, you know, all of the principals to sit down for interviews. And that's the one thing that I can tell you just being around a little bit is what you really want is you really want the, the people who no longer have skin in the game, who are willing to talk, um, uh, I get to be around a lot of retired or newly retired players at ESPN. I'm, you know, you do too at the NFL Network. And to listen to these guys tell stories, I go, oh my God, I wish I knew this five years ago. I wish you could have said this five years ago. And it just opens so much up. So that's what I really want to see is not only the footage, but you know, what did Phil Jackson say? What was Phil Jackson willing to say about what was going on with that team at that time and about Michael? And um, I, I don't, I, you know, I, I'm not privy to any details of what's in the doc. Uh, they keep the, the 30 for 30 stuff sort of out of our realm on purpose. But, um, you know, it's 10 hours, I'm pretty sure, 10 episodes that they're going to do for five uh, showings. Um, that's a lot of footage. They have something special there. So, so what do you think? Um, what What do you What do you want to learn uh, most? Do you, was it a, a push off on on Brian Russell, or I mean, <laughs> I mean, what, like what 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 do you want to glean out of this? What do you think needs to be answered? Let's put it that way. The most from this well, documentary, listen, the Jordan story that everybody always wants is why did he retire? You know, why did he really, really, really retire? I don't know if we're going to get that. And it doesn't exactly directly cover that time period. Um, that's what I'd love to know. Um, uh, and then I also want to know why uh, he retired for the, for the second time in '98 when he had an opportunity to keep going. And I think that that will be that will be covered because they could have they could have easily won eight or plus in titles in a row. And so that 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 those are the types of behind the scenes stuff that I'm looking for. But also remember. That Bulls team was such a rock star filled team. You know, Rodman, I remember the Chicago Tribune used to keep a record in the paper every day of the Bulls um, records with his different hair colors. And so you had Rodman changing his hair every few days, and you had Phil Jackson yeah. on his, you know, on his way out and, and all the drama with that, and Jordan and Pippen and and, you know, him getting into a fight with Steve Kerr and punching Steve Kerr out and the poker games on the planes and the and the gambling on the golf and and Jordan playing 36 in the morning and then showing up at night and dropping 38. Like there was a lot of stuff going on with that Bulls team. Uh, they were at the top of their game. Uh, everybody was coming out for them. I mean, there was one game that year. They were so much interest in them. The, Jordan's last game in Atlanta, they thought was his last game. They played in the Georgia Dome, and they got 65,000 people to watch a regular season NBA game. Mm. I mean, the, the rock star status of that team. And when we think like, oh, man, the Miami Heat, oh, man, the, uh, the Golden State Warriors, th- there was maybe no team more famous. I mean, they were, you know, they were the at the top of their games and so to to capture footage from that and the other thing is we all remember this this is not a documentary you know about the 50s where most of us weren't around or don't remember right. we all remember this and so for people of a certain age it's going to be like you know what that's one of the things i loved about the oj documentary and the oj stuff that happened i mean i remember living through it when i was in high school and so this is going to be, again, not only learning, but the nostalgia part of it to so many people, I think, is something that will really invigorate the viewer. Oh, no, no, no doubt about it. Um, but I mandated before I let you go to ask this question. Are you intimating that uh, Jordan's retirement the first time was not because he really wanted to scratch that 
baseball itch? Mm, nobody Brian? knows. I mean, you know, that's what he says. Sure, I'll believe it. I just, I'd like to, you know, who knows? Um, <laughs> See, we, won't, know, like, we uh, won't even go were, there. You, were, you and I won't even go there right now know. on YouTube, I, right? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'd like to know. But don't you think that there's a chance that you're in this documentary, like oh, God. play calls? There's, there is. Brian, I am I am for sure going to at one point just be going about my business, and my Twitter timeline will explode with look at you with your hair, just as it did in the last 12 hours because SportsCenter tweeted out and Instagrammed out a bunch of SportsCenter commercials, including me with Stuart and Kobe. I get all of these screen grabs from friends, texts, tweets, everything. Look at you with hair. Yeah, I had hair. You know, I don't understand what, what, what the year, big thing what is. What years do you think your Sports Center Prime were? What were your Sports Center Prime years? This was in your Prime Sports Center years. Yeah, right? I, well, I got there in '96. So, um, but the the issue there's two issues. One is yes, I can be doing a Sports Center call from exactly what you're talking about. But the odds are Stuart Scott did the highlight because there was no yeah, way true. on this green earth yeah, that's true. that <laughs> yeah, Michael that's Jordan right. would that's succeed right. at anything significantly, <laughs> and I would get that highlight. Not a chance, that's fair. Brian. That's a good point. So All right, it's mind. iffy. It's it. iffy that I'm in the last dance. Let's put it that way. Iffy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> thanks for All the, right. thanks for the call, Brian. Appreciate it. Glad you're Take healthy care, and well. Right. And let's chat Bye -bye. soon. Let's chat soon. That's Brian Winhorse. ESPN NBA Insider. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.